Hi friends, have you ever made a paper flower bloom? Well, join me and I'll show you how. So how can we make a flower made out of paper bloom? Well, before we do that, let's look at why real flowers bloom. Real flowers bloom to attract insects, and then insects takes the flower's pollen from flower to flower, and then that fertilizes growing fruits and seeds. The blooming of the flower is part of the plant's reproductive process. What we're going to do is recreate the opening of the flower's bloom and have some fun along the way. Now here are some materials you're going to need. You'll need some construction paper. In fact, get different types of paper. Copy paper, newspaper. You'll need some markers, pencil, and crayons. Now if you want to use crayons, I'll have a special note about that later on. And a pair of scissors. Now, you may need help with your scissors, so grown-ups stay nearby to help out with any kind of cutting with scissors. And then a container for water. And that's where we're going to get started. This is my container for water. Grown-ups, you can help set this up. With my container, it's only filled about an inch from the bottom, so you don't need to fill your container to the top. You just need enough water to have paper float. Now we need to cut a flower shape out of our paper. And if you're going to use scissors, you might need a grown-up to help you out. So now we're going to cut out the flower, and as we cut out the shape that I've drawn here, I want to show you that as we cut each petal, we want to cut out the shape of the petal all the way down to the middle of the flower, because we want each petal to be separated from the other ones. So as you cut out the shape, and you finish off your flowers, make sure that you check that each petal is separated from the other ones. And then you can make any shape you like. And instead of cutting, you can also tear out the shape of a flower. I've done that with a couple here. Uh, you can make a flower with more petals or different shapes and sizes. But the main thing is that whatever flower you have, that your petals are separated from one another. Now to set it up, you're going to take each petal and fold it into the middle of the flower. As you take each petal, they're going to overlap as you fold it into the middle of the flower. So just do that all the way around your flower and fold in each one of the petals to the middle. Now you want to make sure that's a nice good crease. So go back around and really push in on each one of those creases because the flatter it is, the better this will work. Once you've got it nice and flat, your flower is ready to bloom. As you put your folded flower on top of the water, Make sure that the petal that you fold it last is on top. Here we go. All right. Just be patient. Here it goes. There it goes. The petal starts to open. Yep, now the other ones are opening. They're all opening. Your flower is blooming. But why did it bloom? when we put it in the water. When your paper hits the water, it starts to absorb water, and then the paper gets thicker. And as the crease in the paper gets thicker, that first petal starts to open up, which gives room for the petal underneath to open up. And then all the petals start to open up as the paper absorbs more water. And then your flower blooms. Here's a note about different types of paper. We know that the paper needs to absorb water so the petals open up. And different types of paper are going to absorb water differently. So depending on the paper you use, sometimes the flowers will bloom very fast or really slow. So try different types of paper and see how that affects how your flower blooms. And here's a special note about crayons. If you're going to use crayons to decorate your flowers, it's going to affect how fast the water is absorbed in the paper because it's made out of wax, and that makes it harder for your paper to absorb water. Now that you have a blooming flower, let's have some more fun. How about putting a message inside of one of your blooming flowers so when it opens up, someone can see it? Happy birthday! Maybe you can put the question of the day inside of your flower so when it blooms, it's presented to everyone, like, what do you like best about me? Now that actually is an example of one of our conversation starters with winter. And if you want more conversation starters, you can check out our series. 
How about racing your blooming flowers? You can get two flowers and race them to see which one opens first. So we have our orange and our yellow. Which one do you think is gonna open first? Yep, they're both off, they're doing it. The yellow's definitely has some good movement. The orange is trying, the yellow's there. The yellow's way ahead. The yellow bloomed first. Why do you think the yellow flower bloomed faster than the orange? Was it the type of paper? Was it the number of petals? Maybe the size of the flower. And then finally, how about telling a story with your blooming flowers? You can get a bunch of different flowers and then put different things inside each one, like the names of all the people that you know, and maybe things around the house or places you want to go. And then you can prepare a story that you want to tell, or you can just tell a made up story by randomly picking out flowers and then making up the story as each flower blooms. My dad went to the beach with our dog Skippy. Do you have any other ideas for your blooming flowers? Enjoy blooming your flowers and I'll see you next time. Keep watching our learning at home videos. Plus visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.